Ravi Sharma, welcome to Property Insights. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. What do you say to those people, though, who say, I've decided most of the work here is here in Sydney. Um, I can't afford to live in, buy in Sydney, um, but I, my work is here and I don't want, really don't want to move anywhere else. What do you say to them as a buyer's agent about what they should be doing in terms of investing in the property market? Because they've also decided I want to, somehow I want to invest in the property market. Where are you suggesting them to go? How do they go about it? The only other solution they have, in my opinion, is rent vesting. So that's something I do is I've always, um, you know, since I moved out of home, it's always been I'm going to invest elsewhere and I'll rent here. Right, so um, rent vesting is a term. Yep. Um, a lot of people don't know what it means. What's it mean? So essentially renting where you want to live and then buying and investing in areas that logically make sense. Or you can afford. Or where you can afford. So if you look at it comparatively going, I can afford $500,000, that 500000 in Sydney gets me a one-bedroom apartment. In Perth, might get me a house. Or in Wollongong, it might get me a, uh, an apartment, a new apartment with a view. Correct. Or in ACT, Canberra, rather, yep. it might get me a, a brand new apartment mm -hmm. in the middle of town, yep. close, to, close to where all the people work. Now, and, and I guess what you're talking about then is when you're buying those things, you're a, um, not an owner occupier, but you're a, an investor. Um, so what's the path? What, so you talk to them, you make that suggestion, rent vesting. Um, is it rent vesting or rent investing? Rent vesting. Rent vesting. Yep. So you suggest them rent vesting and they go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So what's the next thing you say to them? What, what do you, how do you set them up? I think then you got to look at, you know, the, the end goal. So for a lot of people, uh, especially like for myself as well, it's I would love to own my own home one day, right? And the dream home, wherever it needs to be, maybe what is it that? is in Sydney. What's what? the dream home for yeah, me? Tell me. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, I'm going to pretend like I've never thought about this, but I've always thought about it. Tell me, um, yeah, I'm dying to know. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's near water in Sydney. Um, I was born here. I love it. Every time I travel, I come back going, I feel so re-energized being back in Sydney. This is home. And I think fortunately, unfortunately, I love my family so much that I just can't move elsewhere. My partner's the same. So she's in the boat where we can travel for as long as we want, but we're always going to want to come back and hang out with family. So it's going to be in Sydney. And the reality is it's probably going to be a purchase of four or five million dollars. And then if we want a house the way we want it, we're probably going to have to build something which costs another two mil. Right. right. So the reality is it's a seven to eight mil sort of project. Um, so for me, if I want to do this right, I can't go out there, blow out all my borrowing capacity by buying a house for two million dollars, settle. Uh, in you know a different part of Sydney and say call it a day I think at 31 I've got choice and for a lot of people that are coming to us uh, whether it's the buyer's agency or just approaching me through emails the reality is they all pretty much want the same goal which is financial freedom have a house paid off and self-retirement but what we got taught is you got to buy your house first and then hope that you pay it off over 30 years and then retire on your super but there's so many different ways we can do it, especially with different asset classes too. I mean, I know we talk about real estate a lot, but there's emerging markets as well, emerging assets that people don't want to pay attention to. And now as well, it's not frowned upon as much as it was 10 years ago, where if you decided to start up your own business or a side hustle for $10,000 a year, that could increase your borrowing capacity by, by a lot versus you trying to work an extra five, six hours a week to get a, a pay rise of say $2,000. So there's numerous ways to get there. And I think the approach that we've taken is Let's start with the end goal. Okay, cool. We know what the end goal looks like. Now come back to the present and say, can we realistically do that by wanting to splurge out on a million dollar house now? And that's it, you're stuck. Or can we go out there, buy a couple of different properties, different markets, and then be in the mentality that I'm not emotionally attached to any of this. So if I need to trade out one of these properties, if it's the right time of the cycle, I will do that. Whereas before the saying was, you know, you buy and never sell. So, you're, so I think you're suggesting then one... Uh, strategy would be to buy a number of properties, less expensive properties, and just keep adding to that. Perhaps trade in and out sometimes, but just keep adding to that. Adding to that, then over time, have enough of these properties. They're all going to have debt on them, but have enough of these properties, which have gone up in value such that you could probably sell everything, mm -hmm. and then go buy your dream house. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, you you might be in a position where. You find yourself in 10, 15 years where you could probably sell half the properties, have enough for a deposit to buy the dream home, have some debt on it. But now the properties that you purchased early on, income's there, positive cash flow allows you to make the repayments on your mortgage. Now you get best of both worlds. And I think most people are going out there trying to buy the Lamborghini first. I'm trying to buy, buy a fleet of Ubers and taxis 
that will eventually get me there faster with more choice. Yeah, so the old, the old way was you bought your owner-occupied house that you're going to live in for the rest of your life now at 23, 24, 25 when you got married. Then you went and bought your investment portfolio. You added to your portfolio with inv- in, like small investments around the place to live off the rent and the capital gains. Um, what you're suggesting is maybe we've got to flip that and uh, do that in reverse. Um, buy smaller chunks so you're sort of like basically chunking it out and you're chunking chunking it out over time and then renting wherever you want to live and uh because generally speaking and there's some mathematics in this generally speaking the house where you want to live generally speaking in terms of the rent you would pay is quite a small yield relative to the value of the house because houses in sydney for example um, an expensive house in sydney doesn't have a rental that anywhere would any way, shape or form reflect the interest payments on that same property if you bought it and borrowed mm. the money. It just doesn't happen that way. At the expense of it, you know, the cheaper end is a bit different.